Hello, everyone, and we're live. Welcome here. Hi, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, awesome. Let us know in the chat there where you're joining us from. Awesome, I see everyone saying good morning now. All right. Well, it is that time. So I think what I'll go ahead and do is hand it over to Sanai to kick us oh. off today. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us. Uh, welcome to our webinar, Reeling in Success with ArcGIS Enterprise Integration. My name is Sanai, and I'm a technical support specialist for the FME Flow product. Um, and I have my two colleagues here. Do you want to introduce yourself? Maybe start with Dan? Sure. Yeah, my name is Dan Minnie. I'm a technical support specialist here at Safe Software, and I uh, focus primarily on the uh, FME form uh, side of uh, side of things. Good morning. Uh, my name is Matt Niebuhr. I'm also a technical support specialist, but with the FME Flow uh, team, the server side team. Awesome. Today we're going to talk about uh, real-time workflows in ArcGIS Enterprise, and we'll start by laying the groundwork. What is a webhook? How does it relate to ArcGIS Enterprise and FME Flow? Um, we'll explain some best practices and tips. We will also give three product demonstrations uh, representing the three different kinds of webhooks you can build, and then we'll share some resources and finish up with the Q&A. Um, but first, I'll let Elizabeth uh, introduce the platform we're using today. Perfect. So just a quick intro to Livestorm, if this is your first time in the platform. We have the React emoji button. Share your reactions with us throughout using that. We have the questions in the chat tab. So keep letting us know where you're tuning in from today. We love to see that. And questions. We will have live Q&A at the end, so definitely drop those in as we go. And if you do have any audio or video issues throughout, you can click the help button on the bottom left for four simple troubleshooting steps. Perfect. And I'll hand things back over to Sanai. And with that, we will launch our poll here. Yeah, we wanted to start things off by hearing from you um, and learning a little bit more about your experience with enterprise webhooks, or maybe you've used webhooks in other contexts. Um, perhaps you've used them in ArcGIS Online. Uh, let us know in the poll, um, and that can help guide some conversations. You know, feel free to ask questions at any skill level as well. We're going to start from the bottom and kind of work our way up in complexity. So. Uh, there should be some useful information for everyone. Um, and if there are any exclusively ArcGIS Online users in the audience, please keep in mind that the instructions differ for setting up webhooks uh, between, between platforms. Um, but I'd recommend you know, tuning into our ArcGIS Online web webinar that we have linked on the next. Next slide, uh, we've covered those webhooks before, but please do stick around for this presentation, um, if not just for workflow inspiration. Mechanically, things will just differ a little bit. Looks like we've got a, a lot of uh, users who haven't used webhooks in the enterprise before, which is good. Yeah. Be good learning experience today. Awesome. Yeah. It looks like we have most folks in there now. Great. Yeah, it should be an awesome opportunity to learn, learn today and gain some inspiration for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, even if you haven't used them before um, or you want to use webhooks from another web application, uh, the webhook triggers we'll be showing off automations are, are still very relevant. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, thanks to everyone for uh, participating in that. So that's really good to know. Um, like I said, I think everyone will find something useful in this webinar. Um, and there's the link to the uh, webinar for the ArcGIS Online webhooks if you're curious about those. Um, 
But if you're totally unfamiliar with webhooks and not even sure what we're actually talking about, uh, please do stick around as well. The end goal for today basically is to learn how to build these automated workflows in FME that are both event driven and responsive. So we're dealing with real time workflows today and web, webhooks enable us to do that. To begin with, um, we're going to introduce FME uh, as a platform and a company. Safe Software has been in the data game for nearly 30 years now. Um, our team is located across Canada, as we mentioned earlier, I'm located in Calgary, but our head offices are in Surrey, British Columbia. But the FME community is worldwide. I think that's reflected in the diversity of data challenges and solutions that uh, can be found across our customers and partners. Just take a couple minutes on our forums and uh, you can see that for yourself. Um, and as you might have known, uh, we've re recently undergone some changes ourselves. Uh, these are new logos and product names, so you might be familiar with our old products, uh, FME Desktop and Server and FME Cloud. These are now known as FME Form, Flow, and Flow Hosted. Uh, so we'll be using those names today. I think this rebrand better reflects who we are in this day and age. No longer, you know, just the scrappy GIS ETL program, but a fully fledged enterprise integration platform. And we've also kept up with the increasingly sort of light speed pace of change in the data landscape. Uh, we support over 500 data formats, including, you know, all the latest and greatest acronyms. We have AI, AR, VR, IoT, you name it. Um, and our supported integrations list is always expanding. But the ArcGIS Enterprise platform is one of our most well-established and well-supported integrations, I'd say. We have a lot of customers using uh, Enterprise. Uh, the Webhooks integration, however, is a relatively new approach compared to something like the SDE, and they offer considerable benefit. A challenge that Webhooks address is the often time-consuming um, and error-prone task of manual data and user management in ArcGIS Enterprise, which is dealing with a lot of users, a lot of data, um, a lot of things going on, uh, and a lot of different departments potentially. Uh, maintaining all this often gets in the way of important projects or other goals that you might have. By automating some of these processes, however, we can free up time for things that we'd rather be doing. And webhooks are a great way to automate tasks that are time sensitive or request driven. So how can webhooks do this for us? We'll start with some general reasons. So real-time information flow enables us to make better decisions, reduce response time, and overall just be more efficient. Um, we can enjoy better data quality by automating the validation, uh, transformation, or analysis of new data. So by doing this, we no longer spend time reviewing and responding to individual errors and requests, ultimately freeing up our resources. We can automate sharing information with external stakeholders like partners and clients, the public, and similar barriers often extend between and within our teams and departments. So uh, let's say you can instantly connect the planning department to parks or the engineers with administration. Um, no matter the software or data type, everyone can work together more effectively because everyone has what they need. So webhooks ultimately allow us to build reactive instead of proactive workflows. In traditional workflows, um, we often ask the application for data. So you might already be familiar with APIs or other methods of data retrieval. Um, and if it's time sensitive, we can only ask for this data more frequently. Webhooks eliminate that burden. They tell us the moment the data is available. This means less overhead for both sides. So we no longer have to ask in that application on the other side no longer has to answer each time. So when an event takes place on one application, a message is pushed out about that event and FME receives that message and responds with the workflow. There are a few key items and uh, terms that, about webhooks that you should probably know that we'll be mentioning today. An event is anything that represents change on that application. So that might be activity, updates, the state. Um, the webhook message usually contains information about that event. 
The URL is the destination for that webhook where it's sent to. And you should probably be a little familiar with JSON, a very common data exchange format for the web. So how do webhooks relate to ArcGIS Enterprise and FME? ArcGIS Enterprise offers three distinct categories of webhooks. The first is organization for monitoring user and item activity, feature service webhooks for monitoring changes to hosted data sets, and lastly, geoprocessing webhooks um, that can notify upon the completion of the process in ArcGIS Server. Uh, so within each category, we can monitor for um, many different kinds of events, and a full list is linked on this slide. These are some of the examples that you might use. So um, FME could respond to changes in a user's role by updating their permissions. We may want to get a notification for different kinds of data set updates or automatically run a data validation workflow when a field crew makes an edit. And of course, synchronizations with different software and systems our organization may use. All of these represent tasks that are often done manually, subject to error, or maybe we should be doing them, but we can't find enough resources. I have a few of those. Um, so when these events happen in Portal, ArcGIS pushes a message to FME flow, um, and it's received by an automation. A webhook trigger receives that message, and in response, that automation will run any type of workflow with the content. And once that webhook data is ingested into an FME workspace, um, these are some of the tools that you might use for working with ArcGIS portal data. We have a native reader and writer for working with hosted data sets, a connector for managing items, and the HTTP caller that can automate almost all other actions that you might need to perform in enterprise. All you need is a web connection to your ArcGIS Enterprise. Note that the web connection needs to be configured for both your specific portal instance and both on FME form and flow. We have very detailed instructions for doing that on the slide if you don't have that set up already. And as mentioned, um, while working with almost any web format, you'll probably run into JSON. Um, this is a very common data exchange format that's built like a dictionary, but don't worry if you're unfamiliar with JSON, we have an arsenal of transformers for turning this text into manageable data that can be used in your workflows. Lastly, there are some requirements for building these webhook workflows um, in your organization. Most likely, you've already got at least most of these in place. So you'll need a web connection for Portal. You'll need a Portal account with the correct permissions, a secure FME and Portal instance, and also just a network communication strategy, which is typically handled by your IT team. Um, but I've linked an article on here for reference and tips. So now that we know our tool set and what we can do with it, we're going to jump into our practical examples. So in our first demo, uh, we're going to be concerned with item management. Basically, we want to keep tabs on everything, so all our items that are being shared publicly, who's sharing them, and when. The organization webhooks allow us to have this information instantly and automatically. So we're just going to start this demo now. So we'll begin with the completed workflow. In the ArcGIS portal window to the left, a technician is going to share a feature service with the public. And to your right in the Slack channel, uh, watch as the administrator is going to receive a notification about this activity in real time. Integration between portal and Slack appears to be completely seamless. However, it's this FME flow automation that made it all possible. So triggers kick off workflows in response to different kinds of events, and the webhook trigger responds to incoming messages. After an event is detected, we can perform many types of workflow actions. So for example, a logging action here will record the content that's received from the webhook message. So we'll give this automation a name. And when we save it, it's going to make the webhook URL become available. There it is. Remember that URL is our webhook's final destination. We'll use it in our next steps. Um, when this automation starts, the webhook trigger is now listening for incoming messages. We can access organizational webhooks from the ArcGIS portal REST services where we can create new webhooks or update existing webhooks. There's a couple key pieces to note. So we give it a name, 
There's also configuration settings for how to handle frequency and failures. And we also specify the event, in this case, sharing portal items. We can copy our webhook triggers URL and replace this payload URL. So it's pointing to our new automation. And in our automation log, once we save that webhook, we should get an update indicating a successful connection. To test our webhook event, we can share another feature service in Portal. And when we share this feature service in Portal, we should now get a webhook message that details you know, what's been shared and when. So I'll just share another feature service. And to our right in our automation log, if I just refresh, Here we have our webhook message detailing that sharing event. So now instead of just logging this message, let's do something with it. And for that, we need to use FME form to build a workspace. So I'll go over to FME form. This is our FME workspace that intakes the webhook message. We're gonna turn it into a data feature first. We'll take that JSON and we wanna parse it to give that data feature um, attributes so we can pull out the information we want, like the username, when the event happened. Webhook messages from Portal often only give us the most basic information. So we're going to use that item ID in a REST API request to ArcGIS Portal in the HTTP caller. And when we receive more information about it, like the title, the link, the owner, description, we can build a descriptive message for our notification. We can use that message lastly in our Slack uh, connector so that our notification is descriptive. And when this workspace is complete, we would publish it to FME flow so that we can use it in our automation. So let's go back to our automation and update it to use that workspace. First, just stop it. And we'll add this workspace action downstream from the webhook trigger. And we will uh, choose our webhook content to be ingested each time and passed into the workspace. And when the automation starts, it's once again listening for incoming messages from ArcGIS Portal. So let's share another item to confirm that our workflow works. Um, sharing an item with everyone should trigger another real-time notification to be sent to our Slack channel. There it is. But this time, we've seen the magic behind the curtain. So we can go back to our automation log here. And in our automation log, we have a webhook message about the sharing event that was received. And then additionally, we see that a job was submitted for processing that webhook message and also delivered the notification. So yeah, in organizational webhook workflows, um, this real-time uh, response allows administrators to respond by you know, making it their best informed and timely decisions. So I'm going to pass it over to Dan now for an exploration of feature service webhooks. Great. Thanks, Sanai. Yeah, so in the next section, we'll be taking a look at our feature service uh, webhooks and how we can integrate those uh, with FME. So in the following demo, uh, we'll be taking a look at a scenario where a feature service uh, contains public art records in the city of Vancouver. And every now and then, when new art installations are added, a city employee is responsible for adding these new records to the feature service using an ArcGIS portal web map. To ensure a high standard of data quality, uh, we want to enrich that data with some additional information, such as the neighborhood that the art uh, is within, as well as a URL for the info page on that art installation. And we also want to send out an email notification, similar to what Sanai just showed with the Slack notifications, to a city, uh, to the city art department manager who's responsible for overseeing the city's public art installations. So to do all this, we'll be using our feature service webhooks and the FME platform. So we'll hop into our demo. <clears throat> so to start off, uh, we have our feature service in uh, ArcGIS portal. And I'm just showing our uh, attributes so you get an idea of what we're working with here. We have our neighborhood 
a couple other different things there, our URL. So the neighborhood and URL are the ones that we're going to uh, want to enrich later on in our workflow. On our feature service, we need to make sure that uh, we have enabled editing and we are uh, also enabled uh, um, keeping track of changes to the data. Uh, if you don't have this configured, then you're not going to be able to use the feature service webhooks. So we'll go to our ArcGIS server admin directory next, and this is where you're going to be creating those webhooks. We'll go to our hosted folder and go to our feature service. And we'll scroll down, scroll down to the bottom to our resources, and we can click on webhooks. And this is where we'll be creating those uh, new webhooks. In this example, I've already created a webhook. As you can see here, we can click in and uh, look at our settings that we've already set. We have three different change types, uh, and I've enabled all of them here. So it'll be monitoring for uh, updates, deletes, and uh, new records. Uh, you can see I've set the interval to 10 seconds. So that's how often a uh, webhook message will be sent out if you're uh, making changes. And I've also set up our webhook URL. So this connects to uh, our automation where we've set up our webhook trigger. So if I click into our webhook trigger, you can see that our webhook URL here is the one that I copy and pasted uh, into uh, the webhook when I was creating it in our admin directory. So we'll just take a quick look at uh, triggering that webhook. We'll go into our web map and we'll start an edit session and add a new point and we'll place this on our map. And we'll just copy and paste in some uh, values there for our attributes. And you can see we have different attributes here. Again, we're going to leave URL and neighborhood empty uh, because later we'll be showing off how we can automatically populate those uh, values using FME. Once we've finished our edits, we're just going to save our layer just to make sure all those, those changes are saved. And then we'll go back into our automation. And since we have our logger here, we can go into our uh, automation log. And you can see we have our webhook. Uh, message there, which contains that change URL, which is going to contain all that information we need uh, to work with our webhook and understand what's changed uh, with our feature service. So let's go into Workbench and we'll take a look at our uh, workflow that we've created. First off, we'll be using that parameter fetcher to grab our webhook payload message. Uh, next, we'll be using the ArcGIS webhook ArcGIS portal webhook data getter. Uh, thanks, Matt. This is a transformer he created. And this allows us to just pretty much plug and play that uh, webhook payload, uh, select a portal web connection, and it'll uh, give us a response of um, you know adds, updates, and deletes. We've got uh, different ports for those. And we'll be using some JSON transformers to extract our values. Uh, we'll be seeing if that neighborhood value is null. And if it is, then we're going to be doing uh, an overlay to uh, find which neighborhood our new art installation uh, falls within. So here, we're just extracting our geometry uh, with our webhook payload. We do get our, our geometry along with that. We're just setting co some coordinate systems um, just so that it matches with our local area boundaries data set. And we're just pulling this directly from the uh, open data portal for the city of Vancouver. And if I scroll in here, you can see that uh, we've got all our different neighborhoods. So we're pretty much just trying to find which neighborhood uh, these the new point or record falls within. So to do so, we're using that point on area overlayer, which is a great tool for doing these uh, the, doing these overlays. And then the last step here is just doing some more data enriching. We've got uh, a couple more JSON transformers. This one, I'm using the JSON extractor. You could use uh, one of our other ones if you prefer. Uh, and then we'll be creating that URL linking to our uh, information page for that art.
So essentially, this URL is just um, it's the same string every time, but the the value of the n changes. So we're just using our ID there to specify that URL. We're then using the null attribute mapper just to make sure that we don't have any null values. Uh, we're going to be mapping these to a new value, which is uh, not specified. Just looks a little cleaner uh, and is a little easier to see uh, right away when you're looking at the data set. So to update our uh, feature service uh, or a layer in ArcGIS portal, we'll be using the portal writer. And if we go in here, you can see I've set it to update and to use the existing uh, layer. So that's how we can enrich our data and update it with new information. And the last step here is just going to be sending out an email notification. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do this step, but this is just something I like to do using the report generator. You can generate some clean looking HTML, which we will then send to an automations writer. So this just allows us to grab that HTML content and use it in our email. The next step here would be to publish up our uh, Workspace 2 uh, FME flow. So we'll just specify our Workspace name. I've got an existing one there. We'll click Yes. And then you'd want to upload your connections. I've already done so, so I don't need to do this. And then all we need to do is use the job submitter uh, service. So if we go back into FME flow, we'll stop our automation. And you can see we already have our run uh, workspace action there, as well as our email uh, action. And we've just connected that to our webhook trigger. You can see with our webhook payload, parameter, we've selected our message content coming from our webhook trigger. We've specified our portal URLs. Uh, that's our local area boundaries, GeoJSON file, and our web connection. We've then specified our email information. And you can see we're using that HTML email format. And our email body is uh, coming from that HTML report generator. So we'll save that. And let's start our automation. And then we'll go back to our web map and add another feature. So as we're adding this feature, let's keep in mind uh, what's happening here on the FME form side of things, uh, or should I say FME flow with that workspace we published. Uh, if we leave the neighborhood and the URL values empty, as we're doing here, we should expect that uh, FME flow is going to be grabbing that webhook message it's going to see that those values are empty, and it's going to uh, process it through our workspace, find out which neighborhood our art falls within, add that URL, and then update uh, that new record in our feature layer. So we'll just go ahead and save that uh, those edits. And then we'll be refreshing our page here. And after refreshing our page, we should see when we click on our new record that those attribute values uh, have now been updated. So we'll click on that. And as you can see, we now see that uh, we have the neighbor neighborhood value here, which is Mount Pleasant. And we also have a URL uh, value populated. So it looks like our workspace uh, worked. And we've also got our email not notification and this just tells us uh, that a new feature has been added. And we've also got um, some information such as the title, uh, what type of uh, public art it is, and also a link to the web map just to make it easy for um, the city art manager to take a look at that. All right, and we'll go back to our slides here. So just to recap, with our feature service webhooks, we're able to monitor for ads, updates, and deletes uh, on our uh, records that are added or removed. Um, for our feature service webhooks, we need to create these through the ArcGIS server administrator directory. So this is different than those uh, organization webhooks. Uh, we also want to take advantage of that ArcGIS portal webhook data getter we created. This makes it super easy to process that webhook message 
and parse out any information you need. These uh, webhooks can only be created by admins or members with feature layer privileges. So that's something to keep in mind. And as we showed at the beginning there, you need your editing capabilities enabled on the feature service enable in order to create those webhooks. All right, I'm going to pass it off to Matt to demonstrate the uh, geoprocessing webhooks. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. Um, yeah, so I'm going to demonstrate the last uh, new webhook that's in Enterprise 11, which is the geoprocessing webhook. Uh, prior to Enterprise 11, there was just organization webhooks. Um, so our goal with this demo is to start a downstream process when a geoprocessing service completes on ArcGIS server. Uh, and the blocker in this case might be, you know, how do we know it's completed? How, how do we start that downstream process? And of course, as we've seen so far, uh, the solution is going to be a webhook, in this case, an enterprise geoprocessing webhook and a FME flow automation to catch that webhook message. And the result will be a near real-time notification whenever a geoprocessing service completes. So I'm just going to go into the demo now. Just give it a moment. So the first step um, we have to do in FME flow is to create um, an automation. I've already got this one created. Um, and we're going to use the webhook trigger that we've seen a few times now. Um, after saving, I'm going to get that webhook URL. Um, because uh, I had already created this automation and um, changed the trigger afterwards for this demo, I have to just put some temporary text in there. That's just a small issue in this particular build I was using. But there we see the webhook URL that always gets generated by the automation. And that's the webhook URL that we'll use to create our um, ArcGIS Enterprise Portal geoprocessing webhook. So I'm just going to hook that up to a logger for now, nothing else, just so that we can log out that uh, webhook payload and see what the geoprocessing message looks like. So a uh, very important step, always make sure to start the automation. Otherwise, you'll get an error when trying to create the webhook in ArcGIS Enterprise Portal, or I should say ArcGIS Server. Um, like, like the feature service webhooks, um, these webhooks are created via the ArcGIS Server Administrator directory. So I'm going to log in here. Um, you can log in with username password or with a portal token. And after logging in, um, under services, we'll go to our list of geoprocessing services. I went to the wrong one there. Here we go. So um, we're just looking at system services here, ones that come with ArcGIS server. Um, specifically, we'll look at the spatial analysis service. And if you scroll to the bottom of your geoprocessing service now, you'll see a link for webhooks. Uh, none created at the moment, so we'll create one. And unlike the other types of webhooks, these ones are quite simple. There's no specific um, events to subscribe to. It's just on or off, basically. So we're going to give it a name, paste in our webhook URL from the webhook trigger in FME flow. And another key thing to mention here is you want to make sure if you have HTTPS enabled in FME flow, which you need to be, which it needs to be, uh, you might get an error when clicking create there if your ArcGIS server does not trust the SSL certificate in FME flow. So you might need to import the certificate to your ArcGIS server. But as we see, everything worked. I'm just jumping back into the automation. And upon creation of that webhook, uh, we'll see the webhook has been registered and the name of the webhook we just created in our automation log. So we know things are wired up and working. Now, I'd like to just trigger a uh, geoprocessing service to complete. So I'm going to go into this uh, simple city map here. Um, it just has some basic layers of food vendors and community centers, parks and transit stations in Vancouver. And I'm just going to go into our transit stations and trigger a, uh, we'll just use a simple, simple buffer. around our transit stations, um, we can just say perhaps half a kilometer. 
and that's going to create a new layer, our buffer of our transit station. So we'll run this. And it's important to note with these geoprocessing webhooks that um, when we click, when we go to execute the service, there's no webhook fired. We have to wait for this service to complete. And that is what will trigger the webhook. Whether it completes successfully or with an error or with warnings, um, you'll get you'll get all that info in the message. But you don't actually get the webhook triggered until the geoprocessing service job completes. So that one's completed. Um, we have our buffers. And so if we go back into our automation log now and refresh. We see we've received some JSON um, from ArcGIS server. And we'll, we're going to take a, another look at this JSON message um, in FME form, where we can kind of format it a bit better. Uh, but I'm going to copy this whole message and go into form shortly where we can use it. I forgot to show. I'm just going to click on my logger. To, to get that content, you do have to log the uh, message content from the webhook trigger. So I already had that. Uh, set up on this log action. And you can find that under webhook message content. OK, so taking a look in FME forum here, just going to bring that up. Uh, I've created this workspace ahead of time. It's going to take the JSON payload from the geoprocessing webhook that we saw in our automation log, um, parse it out do a little bit of date time conversion. And we're going to use the RGS portal webhook data getter, which is available in the FME hub, uh, passing in that whole JSON message. And um, we'll see that there's also a geoprocessing messages output port here. Uh, you'll see shortly the JSON payload includes a status URL that we can pass to our, um, to our transformer to get more messages. And then we're finally, we're writing out to um, the FME automation. So I'll paste in that uh, JSON payload. And I'm just going to run this workspace up to the JSON flattener so we can take a look. And it'll be formatted as JSON, so it's a little easier to see. Um, so here's what, here's what you get in a geoprocessing job webhook payload. So uh, you'll see the task that we ran is create buffers. Um, the service name, job ID, the name of the webhook that fired it, and importantly, that status URL. Um, so that status URL, if pulled, will give us some additional messages about the geoprocessing service, um, especially useful if you have errors or warnings. And those are going to come out of our ArcGIS portal webhook data getter. So we'll run up to that, and we'll inspect our uh, geoprocessing messages output. Now, in this case, because everything succeeded, um, the, there's no additional messages returned. Um, but just as an example, if there was an error, um, I'll just pull up a sample error here. Yeah, so no, none there. Everything was successful. Um, just looking at an error here um, of messages that would come back if something had failed. For example, in this case, we can't access the URL. There's also like warnings with uh, warning numbers that may come back if if there were any warnings. And now I'm going to publish this up to FME Flow. Um, I've already published it, so that's the action we see in the automation here. Um, so I want to connect up now my webhook trigger to the workspace action um, and save that. Um, so if I click on this action, you'll see we're passing in that message, webhook message content from the webhook trigger to be processed by that workspace we just looked at. And we'll see there's our automation writer output port. Um, and that's going to pass back the attributes from the workspace that we can use in an email notification that we're going to send regardless of whether the geoprocessing service fails or succeeds. So here we'll see, using the text editor, um, all the fields from the JSON payload, in addition to the messages we're getting from the ArcGIS portal webhook data getter. I'm going to send that all out as an email. Uh, and then I'm going to use a filter in this automation 
to look at that geoprocessing job status. And if it was, if it succeeded, I'm going to use a second workspace to, to write the new um, feature layer that was created out to ArcGIS Online. Of course, this could be a different database or um, you know, a file wherever you want to put that data. So um, here's the workspace I'm using in the second action. It's pretty simple. I'm using the ArcGIS Online connector to go get the feature service path from ArcGIS portal because I'm going to pick a specific folder to write my layer out to. And then once I have that URL, I'll use a feature reader uh, to go get the features going to do some schema cleanup and then write it out to ArcGIS Online. So I'll restart the automation here. And I'm going to go back into our city map and I'm going to trigger another geo process. So I'll remove the buffer layer we created um, and we'll go back into transit stations again. And this time, we'll run a different geo process against that service. How about find locations? So let's build a little expression here um, against our other layers. We'll say we want to find locations within a distance of 250 meters of food vendors, and perhaps within that same distance of, uh, we'll say, parks, maybe. And why not? We'll add one more attribute or one, one more condition, I should say, uh, within one kilometer of community centers. So we're trying to find, we we'll call these uh, the prime transit stations, the ones that are well serviced with amenities. And I'm going to save this result in another folder that I'm going to uh, pull in my FME form workspace. Um, so I'll run this analysis. Again, just to reiterate, um, this doesn't trigger the webhook yet. The webhook will only be triggered once the geo process completes, hopefully successfully. So we're just waiting for that to complete. And now we have a new layer, prime transit stations. Um, we'll see that there was three found. So we'll expect to see these same three points in ArcGIS Online now because the process completed successfully. So we'll just jump over um, out of Enterprise Portal, and this is ArcGIS Online. I'm going to just refresh my content here, and we see we have a new Transit Stations feature layer. And if we open this up in Map Viewer, to take a look, we should see the same three points. Uh, while we're waiting for that to load, just flip back and show the layer created in Portal. Um, and here we go. So zoom out a bit and we'll see there's the same three points that we saw in Portal. They're now created in ArcGIS Online as well. Um, so that's, that's a way you can use a geoprocessing service webhook to trigger a downstream process uh, for synchronizing data or sending notifications. Here's the email we received saying that that job completed successfully. Um, no additional messages, and we can even see what uh, webhook triggered the, uh, the process. It's a good idea um, to include that webhook or perhaps to include your FME flow instance name in the webhook so you know what's where the trigger is coming from. So that concludes the demo. Just a, key a few key points to reiterate here. Using webhooks, FME can start another process whenever an ArcGIS server geoprocessing service completes. And so we looked at a really basic uh, canned geoprocessing job, but uh, you might have a custom one you've developed that's longer running. Um, for example, like from a, mo a model in ArcGIS Pro. So that's really where this could be uh, more powerful for you to integrate those existing processes um, with other processes downstream using FME flow. Um, Geoprocessing webhooks are created in ArcGIS server, not portal. I misspoke at the start of the demo because um, used to creating them in portal because that's where organization webhooks are created, but no, they're created in ArcGIS server uh, administrative console. Um, and lastly, uh, you want to use the 
ArcGIS portal webhook data getter from the FME hub to get additional messages back from the geoprocessing job. Um, and you need to have the right privileges to create geoprocessing webhooks. So um, you need to be an ArcGIS server administrator, have access to the admin server console and uh, or server directory, I should say. Um, or you need to be in a custom role that's been granted the, the new create geoprocessing webhook privilege, which is new in, I believe, uh, ArcGIS Enterprise 11.1. Okay, and now I'll pass it back to Dan for the conclusion. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, let's uh, just conclude here before we go to some resources. Um, so yeah, FME form and flow make it really easy to implement the ArcGIS Enterprise uh, webhooks, whether you're looking at organization, uh, geoprocessing, and feature service webhooks. Uh, you know, there's multiple different ways to work with webhooks in ArcGIS Enterprise, uh, and I highly recommend that you reference um, some of our documentation. Uh, we have some articles that we've created as a result of this webinar. So uh, basically step-by-step -step guides on how to create uh, these different webhooks if you uh, kind of miss some steps during this webinar. We'll also be sharing out our workspaces from this webinar. So you'll have that to use as well as a reference. Uh, definitely make use of that uh, ArcGIS portal uh, webhook data getter. It makes it really easy to work with um, parsing out information from the webhook response messages and saves you a lot of time. Uh, there's also some networking and uh, considerations and requirements that we've mentioned throughout this webinar. So if you are having any issues setting up your webhooks, uh, please reference those. We'll be sharing out some links again in the next slides, which will provide documentation on this as well. Yeah, so some different resources we have here uh, for you to use. Couple different ones. We've got, you know, some articles we've created as a result of this webinar. Uh, that's those integrating ones there. So if you're looking for geoprocessing webhooks or feature service webhooks, we've got tutorials on those as well as our organization webhooks uh, article. Elizabeth, did you want to take over here? Yeah, absolutely. So FME Academy is a great place for guided learning at your fingertips. So check that out, community.safe.com backslash academy. Uh, we also have an ebook on spatial data for the enterprise. So the link is there as well. Webinars, safe.com backslash webinars, lots of great upcoming ones that we have, as well as lots of resources on demand. Uh, knowledge base as well. So a link there for some how to's and demos to further guide your learning. And as next steps here, we encourage you to contact us, info at safe.com. If you do have any questions, we'd love to chat about anything data with you. And FME Accelerator is a great place to get started unlocking the power of your data in just 90 minutes. I actually recently took this course myself and found it to be a great foundation for learning FME. Claim your community badge as a thank you for joining us. I will post that in the chat now as well, just so you have it for reference. And if you aren't yet part of our FME community, we do encourage you to check it out. It's a great place to network with other users alike and FME experts. All right, and with that, we do have some time remaining for some Q&A. So I'll encourage our presenters to come back on stage. And uh, we'll take a look at the questions panel here. Perfect. Um, a lot of great questions came in this morning. Thanks, everyone, for dropping questions in. Um, any we might want to get started with, team? I, I was just starting to respond to uh, Wilfredo Rivera's question regarding um, do we have a study uh, comparing processing times of GeoVent server, which is an Esri product, versus FME Flow? Uh, we don't have any benchmarks that I'm aware of. However, I can say, like, I've used GeoVent Server a little bit, and I'm familiar with some of the output connectors and the analysis features, and can pretty confidently say that what you can do in a, in a workspace and FME form, all the different transformers we have there for analysis, and then all the hundreds of formats we can write to um, exceed what, what GeoVent Server can currently do anyways. Um, but yeah, I don't have any any benchmarks to compare uh, the input connector processing times of GeoVent server versus flow. 
Uh, there's another question here about um, which version uh, you'll need uh, your enterprise to be on um, to use any of these webhooks. And I think it's 11.0. Um, and I believe the organization ones were available in a bit earlier versions. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which ones that was. Um, and I know it was some of the functionality was in beta before that too. Um, but for sure, if you're on if you're on eleven point zero, then you'll be able to use the uh, any of the webhooks we showed today. Yeah, that's right. It, they did make a change. Uh, yes, right. They make a change between eleven point zero and eleven point one. From what I understand, in eleven point one, the webhooks were no longer uh, beta, and there's a few other um, features in eleven point one um, regarding permissions. For example, I think they introduced some new webhook creation permissions that can be assigned to portal users. Um, what we demoed today was all using 11.1. So if you are on 11, things might be a little bit different, uh, but they do still have those three types of webhooks in beta. Um, and yeah, prior to that, uh, earlier versions of, of Enterprise, it was just the the organization webhooks, but they weren't called that. They were, I think they just called them webhooks at the time because that's all they were. So again, if you're on an earlier version, the steps are gonna be a little different than what, uh, and the terms will be a little different than what you saw on the webinar today. I've just linked the prereqs for webhooks, including version uh, release numbers um, in the chat there. So it looks like organizational webhooks were available in 10.7 and up. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. Just taking a look through some of the questions here in the chat, see if there's any we can bring up. Um, there was some talk about, can you use reference feature services? Um, in this case, you can't since the webhooks, you know, they're relying on a web-based mechanism. Um, as far as we're aware, you can only use them uh, for hosted feature services. It might be worth reaching out to Esri to see if there's, um, you know, if that's coming up soon or that's something that they're working on. Maybe even showing your interest it might help, you know, drive to their decision to implement that as well. Um, but that's more on their side. So. Um, but as far as we're aware, you can only use the the hosted feature services uh, for those web hooks. All right. Any other questions we might want to address? Looks like we got to them all. Not sure if there's any so. more. Or if we're all good. Yeah, I think we managed to get up to uh, all the questions and uh, kind of brought up the, the important ones as well. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, just a big thank you to our audience um, for joining us here today. We really appreciate your time and a big thank you to our presenters as well. Thanks, everyone, and we hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye. Thanks, for everyone. Have a great thank day. You. Bye. Have a good one.